Number eight, contaminated water at Camp Lejeune. From 1953 to 1987, and possibly longer, the tap water at the Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune in Jacksonville, North Carolina, was heavily contaminated with dangerous toxins. Soldiers and families living on the base drank and bathed in the poisonous water, which contained concentrations of hazardous chemicals ranging from 240 to 3,400 times the permitted safety levels. The first concrete evidence of the contamination came during the 1980s, when the water was tested for certain chemicals for the first time under newly imposed environmental regulations. Initial reports claimed that the tainted water could not be linked to any serious long-term health problems, despite the water containing degreaser, benzene, vinyl chloride, and dry cleaning solvent, among other toxins. Even after word of the contamination started to get out and the high cancer and birth defect rates among former Camp Lejeune residents became evident, the U.S. government remained in denial about the toxic water's effects on human health. Victims alleged that the deception started with Marine Corps leaders who had early knowledge of the contamination and failed to take action to resolve the issue or inform people of their compromised health. The improper disposal of hazardous waste that once occurred regularly at the base is thought to be a major cause of the contamination. Over the years, an estimated 800,000 gallons of benzene leaked into the ground and toxified the drinking water. The Marine Corps was aware of this yet conveniently omitted it from a health report that it submitted for federal review in 1992. Authorities finally publicly acknowledged the severity of the problem in 2009. In 2012, former President Barack Obama signed the Janie Ensminger Act into law to provide medical care for those affected by the long-ignored problem. To date, over 800 former residents of Camp Lejeune have filed claims against the military totaling nearly $4 billion. The true extent of the damage will never be known, since people who once lived at the base are spread out all over the world, but up to 1 million people are thought to have been poisoned. The Environmental Protection Agency placed Camp Lejeune and 236 miles of North Carolina's coastal land on its list of Superfund sites in 1989, and its cleanup remains a major priority today. Number seven unexploded tall boy bomb. In 2019, workers discovered a six-ton bomb during a project to deepen Poland's Piast Channel. Known as a tall boy, the 19-foot-long explosive was designed by the British during the Second World War. It was the largest unexploded World War II bombs ever found in Poland, and it was inconveniently located in one of the country's busiest shipping waterways. Tall boys were among the largest explosives used during the conflict. They were so powerful, their effects mimicked an earthquake. The bomb that was found in the Piast Channel was dropped on April 6, 1945, during a raid on the German cruiser Lutzo. Authorities were initially unsure of what to do with the 12,000-pound weapon, which had sat undisturbed at the bottom of the channel for 75 years. It was almost completely buried in the sediment 40 feet from the water's surface and seemed like a non-threat to shipping traffic but any unexploded munition is a hazard, especially in a busy place. The channel remained opened while a crisis team planned for the delicate process of removing the gigantic bomb. In 2020, more than a year after its discovery, a team of divers attempted to defuse the explosive. Knowing there was a 50-50 chance that it would detonate, authorities evacuated 750 people from the immediate area ahead of time. Using a remote-controlled device, the team tried to burn the bomb's explosive charge without detonating it, a process known as deflagration. Despite their best efforts, it blew up, causing a huge column of water to blast into the air. Luckily, the divers were far enough away to avoid injury. Number 6. Agent Orange During the Vietnam War, American forces dumped tens of millions of gallons of toxic herbicides across Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos in a deadly decade-long campaign codenamed Operation Ranch Hand. The clandestine mission's purpose was to deprive the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese military of food and vegetation cover by using the chemicals to destroy crops and vegetation. The most heavily used herbicide, was famously known as Agent Orange. It caused serious health issues among the civilians and military members who were exposed to it. While symptoms often started with a rash, the effects were far more lasting and include cancer, severe neurological issues, liver problems, birth defects, Parkinson's disease, nerve disorders, immune system dysfunction, and heart problems, just to name a few. 
many people still suffer today, and evidence suggests that the landscape remains heavily polluted, especially when it comes to the high rate of birth defects in the affected regions. For decades, the Vietnamese and American governments have gone back and forth trying to reach a reasonable agreement regarding the American government's financial obligations towards the massive cleanup efforts that are needed along with the cost of medical care for those affected by Agent Orange in Southeast Asia. The U.S. government finally started assisting in post-war cleanup efforts in 2012. Have you ever heard of Agent Orange before? Tell us in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 5. Nuclear Pollution at Bikini Atoll Between 1946 and 1958, the U.S. military detonated 23 nuclear bombs at Bikini Atoll a coral island located within the Marshall Islands in the central Pacific Ocean. The American government relocated native residents to nearby Rongerik Atoll and Keeley Island and promised everyone that they'd be allowed to return after the testing was finished. While the military was busy experimenting with weapons of mass destruction with little care or concern for the environmental effects, the islands that the relocated residents were now forced to call home proved to be unfit to sustain life. Starvation ensued leaving the population vulnerable and in an ongoing need of aid. In the meantime, the nuclear tests heavily polluted the soil and water at Bikini Atoll, rendering it uninhabitable. During the early years of testing, nearby Rongelap Atoll was engulfed in fallout, and even more people were relocated. In the early 1970s, 12 years after the last nuclear test at Bikini Atoll, the U.S. government erroneously deemed it fit for habitation and told its former residents that it was safe to return. But the environment there remained contaminated, and the population was forced out again in 1978 when it was discovered that the food they were growing and eating contained high levels of radiation. Rongelap's residents, who had been allowed to return at the tail end of the nuclear testing, fled in 1985 amid fears of lingering radiation. After years of being called out for its negligent response to the damage, the U.S. government reluctantly compensated the islanders and their descendants for their displacement and the nuclear damage, as well as land damage and personal injury claims. The fund ran out in 2012, and the U.S. has since declined to provide further assistance, despite the U.N.'s urging to provide more help. Bikini Atoll remains contaminated, and its future is uncertain as scientists, activists, and Bikinian authorities with limited resources try to determine if a future cleanup effort is feasible. Number 4. Runnet Island While the population left behind the U.S. military's nuclear bomb tests at Bikini Atoll is widely known, it's not the only part of the Marshall Islands that was subjected to the ill effects of dangerous weapons experiments. During the same years that the testing was going on at Bikini Atoll, similar activities were going on at Runnet Island, one of the 40 coral islands that make up an Awitok Atoll. During the 1970s, workers built a concrete dome for housing nuclear waste left behind from the tests, nicknamed the Tomb, it was meant to be a temporary fix while the American government devised a long-term decontamination plan. But that never happened, and today the structure is crumbling, allowing radioactive waste to seep into the soil. A major weather event like a typhoon or a storm surge is all it would take to rip the dome out of the ground and disperse its contents into the ocean, and a scenario like this seems increasingly likely as climate change intensifies, even in the absence of a catastrophic incident. Damage is still being done as the contamination continues to leak, causing locals to fear for their health. The U.S. returned in a Weetok Atoll to the Marshallese government during the 1980s. Runnet Island was quarantined decades ago and remains off-limits today, but this doesn't necessarily protect residents from the harmful effects of the waste which can easily spread throughout the environment. While the American government claims that it's fulfilled its cleanup obligations to the country, Marshallese authorities argue that they lack the resources to clean up the lingering mess that the U.S. left behind and has a moral obligation to assist with. Number 3. Leftover Bombs in Laos Over 2.2 million tons of explosives were dropped on Laos during air raids between 1964 and 1973 making it the world's most heavily bombed country. The U.S. military carried out these attacks during the Vietnam War as part of a secret plot masterminded by the CIA to disrupt movement along the Ho Chi Minh Trail and prevent supplies from reaching the North Vietnamese. Even to this day, 
few Americans know about the nine-year campaign, informally nicknamed the Secret War, which was carried out with little regard for civilian safety. Leftover bombs have killed more than 20,000 people since the war ended in 1975, and they continue to maim and kill to this day. There are an estimated 80 million bombs littering the land, posing a constant risk to the people who live surrounded by them. Progress is slowly being made as various nonprofits work diligently to remove the unexploded ordinance. On the 25th anniversary of its ongoing cleanup effort in 2019, the UK-based Mines Advisory Group announced the disposal of its 250,000th bomb. Just two days later, in late 2021, the group removed its 300,000th bomb from the ground, marking yet another milestone in its quest to help make Laos safe again. But there's a lot of work left to do before civilians can traverse the landscape without risking their lives, and many have accused the US government of shirking its duty to clean up its own mess. In 2016, former President Barack Obama vowed to step up America's efforts and pledge $90 million towards removing bombs from Laos. The U.S. made good on its promise, but unfortunately, there's still a lot of work to do, and progress remains slow as groups involved with carrying out the cleanup continue to experience budget shortfalls. Number 2. The Hanford Site In 1943, the U.S. government established a nuclear production complex along the Columbia River in Benton County, Washington, known as the Hanford Site. It was developed as part of the infamous Manhattan Project and was home to the world's first full-scale plutonium production reactor, the world's first nuclear bomb and the Fat Man atomic bomb that the U.S. dropped on Nagasaki during World War II contained plutonium that was produced at the Hanford Site. During the Cold War, the secretive facility was expanded it eventually grew to include nine nuclear reactors and five plutonium processing complexes, where the plutonium for most of the U.S. nuclear arsenal's more than 60,000 weapons was made. Most of the nuclear reactors were shut down between 1964 and 1971, and the final reactor was finally decommissioned in 1987. Over 53 million gallons of highly radioactive waste was left behind. By the time authorities devised a cleanup plan in 1989, there were significant amounts of radioactivity. In recent years, it was discovered that an underground tank at the site had been leaking hundreds of gallons of radioactive waste into the ground every year since 2010. The pollution remains a problem today as the scientists work to assess the radiation's effects on the environment, wildlife, and human health. And while it may be too late to undo a lot of the damage, the information will help experts determine how to prevent it from worsening. Number 1. Thule Air Base Crash On January 21, 1968, an American B-52 bomber carrying four nuclear bombs crashed in a fjord 700 miles north of the Arctic Circle near Thule Air Base in northwestern Greenland. A crew member had stuffed seat cushions near a heating vent, causing a fire to break out. The smoke became unbearably thick, forcing the crew to eject. By carrying the powerful hydrogen bombs through Greenland's airspace, the U.S. was in violation of Denmark's nuclear-free zone policy, which had been in effect since 1957. The Danish government was less than pleased with the incident, especially since the warheads had broken open during the crash and were leaking radioactive contamination into the water. Denmark demanded that the debris and anything around it that had been contaminated be gathered and relocated to American territory, a cleanup effort codenamed Project Crested Ice ensued and was ultimately deemed a success, despite one nuclear warhead having never been found. In addition to covering the costs of the cleanup, the American government compensated those who assisted in the effort and were later diagnosed with cancer. Thanks for watching. Which of these secret military cleanups shocked you the most? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. Bye.